So I want to go back to my main BP character. So your pirate class, okay? And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new variable. So I want to create a variable. I'm going to call this one max health, okay? And I want it to be a float. I also need a current health, okay? Also a float, so let's compile. And let's make your max health 100. How do we get the computer to know that your current health is based on that? So let me go back event and begin play. Down here, remember we have our hitbox, our max health. So we're gonna say get math health. And then we wanna set the current health. So let's pull current health and let's set it, okay? And then this is gonna be to here and then this to here. Let me just put Q on that. So now it knows if anything happens, it's gonna take into consideration your 100 health or 200 or 300, depending on your mob, okay? So now that we set our health, let's go and try to apply it when you are hit. So if we go to receive damage, I'm gonna expand this a tiny bit. And what I wanna know is I wanna set the current health before everything happens. Okay, so current health set. I also want to add a new input here, and I want this to be damage. So we're going to tell it how much damage you're going to receive every time you're hit. Okay, also make it a float, compile, and this could be whatever you want it to be. So for my sake, I'm going to make it 20, for example. So it's going to take five hits to kill me because our max health is going to be 100. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, right, we have this here now. I'm gonna connect my receive damage to set, and then let's connect that to that. I'm gonna get my current health. You have your current health, let's add a subtract. Subtract, okay. And I wanna connect this to my current health, and I wanna grab my damage. I want to connect it down here. We're going to compile it. So what we're doing is every time you get hit by a certain amount, it's going to tell it to take damage. We need to be able to separate this. So let's just add a branch. And we're going to say, right, if it's false, then you should be able to keep playing your damage. If it's true, then you're going to be dead. For this condition here, we need to tell it that we know our current health and we need it to be less than or equal to. And then we're gonna connect it. Okay, so once we have this, we wanna tell it now our animation that it's dead. So let me go to my functions because I don't believe I have a dead animation. So let me do a quick one. Uh, flipbook, let's do the one that takes damage. Let me duplicate that. I'm gonna call that dead. Okay, I'm going to open it, and I only care about the white one. So you become white when you die, so it's this one. So let me delete that, that, and that one. That's going to be one frame. Save it. Let me just open my AES character, and then it's going to add a dead animation. The one I just created earlier, so it will be called character hero dead. Okay, so it's just a plain white. Save it and close it. The next thing that we need to do is open my animation states. And then here I want to add a new animation state. So let's go animation state. I'm going to call this one dead. Okay. And then I want to create a new jump, but before that, let's just add play dead. There we go. Save it. Okay. And now I'm going to add a new jump, and it's going to be jump underscore dead. And then that will be it. Okay. One thing that we need to do is I don't want this to loop, even though it's one, but in your animation, you just want it to happen once or else it's going to look odd. Let's compile it back to our 
damage received, and we need to set something similar to this. So just to tell to jump to the dev node, okay? So just copy this before we carry on, so then you have the exact name. Okay, so I want to get a paper CD uh, get animation instance, so it's this one here, okay? That's our start, and from there, we're going to pull and try to get a jump node. Okay, so our, again, we know the name, so just select the where it says none, control P to paste it and paste it in there, okay? <coughs> one thing that we need to do is connect here, and that should be able to pull it now. So when you're when you're saying you took enough of damage, still right, I'm dead and play the dead animation. One thing that we will need to do is create that is it dead a uh, boolean or else we will know later on if we are actually dead. So is that this underscore dead? And let's make this a boolean and compile it. Okay. We can just set is that and then we're gonna say right when we get to this stage you should be dead. Okay. And also before we do this way here, I wanna be able to get and ask a question, am I dead or not? So let's get a branch again. So I'm pressing B and click to get a branch. I'm gonna connect this to here. Okay. And in here we're gonna ask the question get am I dead? And we're gonna say if I'm not dead, not boolean. We're asking first, am I dead or not? If I'm not dead, then it's gonna continue through this and then go into your false. If I am dead, then it should just go straight into I'm dead, okay? Uh, one thing that we need to do is, let me play this so I can explain it to you. So if I were to play an interior, it should take five hits to kill, five. You cannot get past him because the collision is still active. So we need to tell it to turn the collision off. Go back to our character. We need to go all the way to our end. And then we need to say, right, I need my capsule component. Okay. And we're gonna set collision. Set collision enabled. And we're gonna connect this. So once you're dead, there should be no collision. So let's do that again, play it. And then you're dead and I can pass through it, yeah? Uh, carry on. So, we have our simple damage. So, what I would like to do now is uh, start creating the enemy to be able to do it. So, I'm going to delete this now to work. So, first thing I need to do, and that's because I don't have the animations, I need to create all the animations for my enemy, okay? So, let me save this really quick so you don't crash. I'm going to go to my flipbook. I'm going to use this enemy. Let's go back to that. So let's open our enemy. And we're going to open our enemy P. Make sure that you click open full editor. And the first thing I want to do is sort my animation, which should be my enemy idle. Now we have to look at this, and it's not the same size of the character as before. So let's go to the right. Make sure that you have lead, or else you won't be able to see the animations. I put it on attack so I can see the hitboxes and everything. So I'm going to make this a tiny bit smaller. And then my hitbox, I can make a tiny bit smaller because it's not going that far, is it? Maybe about there. So now I have my character touching the floor and then my hitbox to do damage. So let me compile it and let's move on. I'm going to right click, paper CD. And we're going to click animation source, so AS, and then this is going to be for the enemy. I'm going to open this. I'll drag it in here for now. I'm going to go new, animation, and this one can be attack. For our attack, we can see, let me pause this really quickly. We go from frame one to two. That's it, it's only one frame, right? So we can do the same. So we can right click. Add a notify state, and then we use the one that we created before, the ANS attack, and we're just going to tell it this last one frame, okay? And then we're going to save it. So let's right click, paper CD, paper CD, anim BP. And then remember, last time we used a hero, this time we're going to use the character one, ABP underscore enemy, okay? We're going to open this. 
And again, it's again on the Venom hit, same as before. So let's get the get owning actor. Remember, paper CD one. We're gonna cast to BP enemy this time, not hero, enemy. And then we can connect this to here. And then we're gonna pull from this blue node and promote it to variable. We're gonna open our animation graph. And remember, we can start it from now. So we need an over right slot, the same as the one we did on our character. Let's add a state machine. And you can call this whatever you want. So I'm gonna call mine enemy motion. Okay. We're gonna save it and we're gonna go into our state machine. First thing I do is I need an idle. So animation state, let's call this one idle. We're gonna open it, we're gonna pull it, and we're gonna say play idle. Okay, it's fine that it loops because it's gonna repeat because you're sitting there. We need also a walk, so animation state. We want this to be walk. We want it to play walk. Okay. We also need a new state, and this can be again damage. Play, play, damage. Okay. Save it. And we also need another one. So this will be death and play death. Okay. Compile it, save it. So now we need our jumps to make it work. And for this, we're also going to be using our hero, a character AVP, because we can use the same names conveniently. So. Let's right click and add a jump. Let's call it jump damage and connect it. Okay. And let's go and copy the other one. Jump dead. Right click, anime jump. And it's going to be jump dead. Okay. We can connect to the idle from damage. And we also need to go back from here, right? We can be cheeky about this and just copy what we have. We cannot copy this because it's a different character, but we can copy the main three ones, okay? So let's open this, connect it, and then all we need to do is bring this out, get my enemy character, and then that's one. And we can do the same for the other one. The when we wanted to stop walking, but in here we need a not bull, so we tell them that it's not going to happen, and then we do the same with this compile it, and then lastly will be this one. So, again, we can copy these two things go to your enemy, connect it. Pull your enemy out and then connect it. Then compile it. So in theory, we have our basic animation working here. So we have walk at to idle and idle to damage, and the death is just going to pull it separately. Okay. Let me go back to my enemy character. We're going to search for the animation state. I'm going to tell it right play ABP enemy, compile it and save again. Okay. In theory, this should work. So let's go into our enemy blueprint, drag it out and then just play and see what happens. So it's all right. It's uh, hitting the collision box. And let me see if I can attack if I go to the right place. So then you're dead, and then you can get passed by. Next video, we'll start talking about AI and the AI attacking you.